Good afternoon. This meeting is now called to order. I'd like to wish everyone a happy uh, greeting today from your city board, the CDC board, working with your city. We would like to have our uh, invocation now by Paula Jones. Let's pray. First of all, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessings of yesterday, today, and any blessings to come. Let any decisions and choices be guided by you. Bless all represented here tonight, this evening, at this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 May I have a motion to accept the agenda, please? Motion to accept. Second. It has been proved and second that we accept the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to look over the minutes? Mm -hmm. May I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? So moved. Second. The minutes has been approved. All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign. It has been proved and second. The minutes are approved. Stand approved. Okay. The agenda. Last week on our um, agenda, we had uh, to hold off. We had um, an announcement from uh, Miss Gray that was telling us that we had to wait to find out what the board had the the city council had decided about Steve Fornihay's uh, position to chairman on that board, which would come back and tell us on the planning board what we needed to know, mm -hmm. and we missed all the good information. So tonight he's here. And we want to hear about all the good stuff that you have to tell us. We couldn't hardly wait. We didn't. So if it's okay, we'll go into his now and let him kind of just brief but, but us. But in his defense, I'll probably oh. say, are you good? Since I'm Trace good. Is okay. I'm good. Oh, you good? All right. I'm, I'm good. Because I know you got accepted, right? Yes. Okay, yes. that's what we wanted. Everybody Everything was to know. accepted. And I am a voting member okay. on the planning board. Okay. Uh, planning board. So anything that we ever want to push their direction okay. for an agenda item, you know, obviously let me know. Our uh, last regular meeting was on March 13th. Mm -hmm. And we had one area of new business. That is on a new unified development ordinance text amendment for wireless telecommunication facilities or complexes okay, now, and what that is is all your Wi-Fi and, and everything else in your speed and the, the gist of the new ordinance is that before a new tower is ever put in place mm. they have to consider along with the planning of the city okay. of co-locating it on an existing tower. If you take a look throughout the city now, in places you're going to see a specialized tower that may have more than one broadband telecommunications on there. Now, in addition to that, all of the infrastructure for that antenna now has to be buried. They have to, you know, dig it underground vault type of setting and the reason that this is really coming to play now is that there are so many users within geographic areas that these telecommunications facilities have to put up towers to service X number now that X number depends upon obviously users now it, you can get a high quantity of users if you're talking about, say, one of the apartment complexes. And they may have to have something there just to service all of the people in that dense type community versus, you know, spread out a little bit more in Northwoods, Bryn Mawr. Okay. You know, some of the single family dwelling areas won't have as many, but what they want them to do and in our older neighborhoods, you know, we have more electrical poles and all mm -hmm. kinds of poles. Mm -hmm. and, and before another tower or another pole is put up, they have to consider using those. Okay. And we Sounds did, good. as a planning board, recommend complete approval to this. 
And I actually think I saw the council meeting where it was approved. It was approved? I do believe so. I believe it was mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Now, our, our next meeting, which was scheduled <laughs> for April 10th, was canceled oh. because we did not have any agenda items. So the planning board meets only when a specific agenda item comes into play okay. that needs us to review it before it's passed to city council. Okay. And that is the end of my report. Thank you so much. We're we'll glad you got elected on the board so we'll know what's going on and we can ask questions. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So in older neighborhood, well, like our neighborhood is an older neighborhood and there are tons of poles. Will, is there a plan for those lines to be buried or, or changed eventually or? What, what exists, like in any new ordinance, mm -hmm. is grandfathered in. Now, Depending upon if it's a significant upgrade that, say, is going to require a new pole because of the height requirement, well, then they're going to have to go ahead and bury that system. But if they continue to use that system mm -hmm. and all they may do is change out, you know, network type things, you'll see at the bottom of some of these poles an actual above ground box. Mm -hmm. And uh, in those cases, as long as they continue using that facility like that, then they won't have to upgrade. But if they ever need a massive upgrade, just like if you're doing a massive a new addition onto your house, okay, you, you have to have certain new code requirements. Right. Okay. But, but I will add that, that um, utilities are typically public utilities. So you're talking... Jones, the Jones Onslow's and the Duke Energies, mm -hmm. and there are no specific plans at this point to bury the, the, the lines in downtown, like your lights mm -hmm. and, and utility mm -hmm. lines. There's been some discussion and many, many requests for it, but because <laughs> of the cost to do it, um, it's not I've anything always been in, a pusher on in immediate infrastructure. Yeah, no yeah. plans in the immediate yeah. future. Yeah. But as, as, as Steve indicated, if there is a major redevelopment going on and it makes economical sense to do it, mm -hmm. it would feasibly be done at that time. But just to go in and bury them for no reason to bury them mm -hmm. is a little yeah. cost now, prohibitive. Now, this is not for uh, the electrical that, mm -hmm. plumbing yeah. and this all that. This is for wi your Wi-Fi and okay. telecommunication services. They don't do the wires. I wonder why they don't do the wires. It would be efficient for them to put them on the ground. Well, instead of all they, those telephone in, poles, in, in certain areas you're going to find that already. When, I when, have you, that. when you have a newer community, mm -hmm. say like the the Commons area, it's still all done. Mm -hmm. that had totally different initial requirements mm -hmm. than say Bryn Mawr, Northwoods, right, you know, some uh, you know uh -huh. down in Bayshore. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, no. I mean, you don't even have sidewalks in Bayshore. <laughs> no. <laughs> but so. I know I have that in my neighborhood and I always wonder when you know when the wind is blowing or a storm come, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry too much about, you know, uh the boxes blowing and the power going out and all <coughs> that because there's nothing to hit it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I always think that if we had um a flood like they're having now, the water and all this mm -hmm. stuff, why don't they just bury them on the ground? It would save I time. think new things, yeah. they you're would seeing it. that. But, but in the older areas, yeah, and, and even in the money. older commercial on Marine Boulevard, True. if you start down there, you, there are so the many wires, mm -hmm. and you're going to find telecommunication tower things mm -hmm. all over the place. And at those locations, because they were put in before this ordinance took effect. Right, right. Down below, you have a box the size of a refrigerator. Yes. That's, <laughs> yes. you know, that's next to that pole. I see. And it. has all kinds of stuff in it. The annual action plan, as you know, that was drafted and prepared and went before city council last month for approval. Well, what we have, ha what has happened, which has not happened in all the years that I've worked for the city, 
is we have not received our notification from HUD yet as to how much we're going to receive. They just adopted the continuing resolution at the federal level, so hopefully we'll hear something soon. But because we don't know how much we're receiving, we could not finalize the, the budget and submit it to HUD by May 15th. So our HUD rep has um, informed us that we actually have 60 days from the date we actually get the notice to submit our plan and update it and tweak anything we need to tweak because we don't know if the fund is going to remain the same or if it's going to de decrease it if so by how much. So we'll be making some adjustments once we know. And uh, we'll still keep an eye out for any discussions forward in the, in the federal fiscal year um, 18 because there is discussion about eliminating the CDBG program altogether. So we don't know what the future holds. We just hope that... Uh, really? Yes, 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 yes. It's oh. one of those of all many budget cuts at the federal level that we may be impacted by. So we're watching that um, closely, and we'll keep you posted. But, um, of course, if any of you feel led to reach out to your congressmen or elected officials at the federal level, please feel free. You are citizens and advisory committees to this board. You can actually do that. So. This will be a, mm, huge be a huge budget fight, mm. yeah. and I don't see us mm. having a federal budget on 1 October. Mm. So we don't, <laughs> we're holding our breaths. So that's the status of the plan. It sits on my desk waiting for the direction. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, and uh, okay, you're going to do your... Okay. Well, this kind of was what I just talked about. You can see our budget has been going down significantly over the years. We've been <laughs> tracking it for the last 10 or so years. And as you mm -hmm. see, FY18 says zero. So we don't know what to plug in there. Mm -hmm. So um, what we typically do is start a budget assuming we're going to get the same amount as last year. Mm -hmm. And then once we get the letter, we tweak it. But oh, we're so late that. in the budget year, we don't have a letter mm -hmm. yet. So no. we're just assuming same. everything's the same. Um, that's the same slide. Of course, this is what we received um, last year. So what we're estimating to receive this year, a little bit of a spike in the program income. And that's the money received from loan repayments. Mm -hmm. So we're estimating we'll be working with over half a million dollars. And this chart I love to show because you see the resources are down and the needs are up. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the middle, we try to prioritize how we use those dollars and right. have the greatest impact. We've... Um, always done use our funds citywide for the last several years as you know we focus a lot on downtown and we like to move forward with some targeting in the new river area as we can um coordinate that i just learned today that new river apartments has is under new ownership again so uh we're still trying to uh figure out who owns it for any length of time to talk about a redevelopment plan haven't been able to pin anybody down on that yet Virginia Beach area? Or They've been gone. Mm -hmm. it went I, I know that was the one that, that went under. That was the last one. Yeah. They went under, and then it has since been bought by another group. Then it went into auction and was bought by another group, and now today I found out there's under new ownership. So there's four within the last four or five years, four owners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, of so. course, that's only 600 units out of the... Se yeah, seven, yeah, 700 is under that yeah. ownership. Yeah. 700 so. out of 1,200. It's a big chunk. Yeah, and it's... Need some attention. That's for New River. That's New River about. area. Mm -hmm. New River Town Center Park. I don't have a buyer for it yet. It has you one, but what, what you, what's very what's difficult to do is to plan any type of redevelopment strategy if you don't have owners that are here going to be here for the long time. These right. are they're really being treated as investment properties mm -hmm. and just whatever they can get. And they're mm -hmm. patching up, putting you know, doing minor repairs, but nothing major. Um, as a redevelopment that would still tarps over yeah many still of the tarps units over there, there. Yeah. that's what I see all the yeah. time and I'm wondering mm -hmm. and they were patching the parking lot mm -hmm. um I know this week mm -hmm. as well in New River the mm -hmm. parking lot's being redone yeah there's still bits of oh, trees yes. down over there too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now the parking lot in the center I mean that has nothing mm -hmm. to do with the, the folks who own that yeah. Yeah. and we've yeah. done some demolition we tore down mm -hmm. I would say Two months ago, there were two units that were burned in a fire, so mm -hmm. we helped to remove those. And I just re I just sent a request, is why I know it's under new ownership, because I sent a request for um, demolition to the last owner of record, and then they emailed me back today and said, we have new owners, so we need to change the contract. So we have two more units that were um, damaged that will help with the demolition. Were those on Eastwood? No, New River Drive. Okay. 331 and 
333 New River Drive. Mm. And then, of course, if we receive funding, we, we will receive funding. I won't say if. This year we will receive funding. We just don't know how much. How much? <laughs> but this Sad. year we just plan to fund our administration, uh, clearance and demolition, mm -hmm. our nonprofits again. In response to the feedback we received during the summit and around this table, we've added a summer youth employment program mm -hmm. that we'd like to get off the ground this year. And, of course, our residential rehab, and we'll continue to acquire properties to replicate what we've done downtown. And uh, the updates. We thank you all for wow. helping us celebrate uh, National City Week. Uh, last month, and it's with that timing of that event, which on April 19th, we were able to demolish our 99th and 100th structures during the week of CD Week. There. Yeah, and uh, those were the two houses. This is the start of the demolition. For those who couldn't make it, of course, our very own Lazaro. Mayor Pro Tem Lazaro. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. Kick, kick this off, and there it is coming down. And there it's it is. amazing mm -hmm. that. There's so much. I I remember all those homes as a kid, and remember people living there. It's just amazing to see the transformation in a whole town. It's, it's, it's just amazing. I know. So where were those two located? Poplar, Poplar Street, Poplar 121 Street. and 121 and mm -hmm. a half Poplar Street. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have got a nice group picture with several of the team members. And I need to publicly thank someone that I missed on that day. And that was our um, media service team. They're in the background, but they are so much in the forefront because oh, without yeah. media, none of this would be documented. The story out. wouldn't mm -hmm. be told. We wouldn't reach the people. And so I want to personally thank and publicly thank Glenn Hargan and his team, Kim and Kevin and Lisa and Alan, for all they do. They're even taping us tonight up late with <laughs> us. And so they're always here. But because of the behind the scenes, you don't necessarily That's see them. Right. So I want to um, thank them as well. And I found us out tell who a story. was the owner of that house. Their first house they ever lived in it was um, Reverend Gray. Oh, okay. Jackie Moore, the one that taught school at Belfort. Yeah. Well, she said that's the now. first house she lived okay. in. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mr. She grew up there. Yeah. I said. She said it didn't. She saw it on the news. She said it didn't seem that small when we was growing More up. Right she said, but yeah. when I saw them tear it down, <laughs> it looked like a little hut. <laughs> I said it did. It was a hut. Yeah, it's, st it's still owned by uh, Mr. Moore. Okay. It is? Okay. Because uh, she that's what she said. That was their first home. Mm -hmm. I said, that's amazing. I didn't know it was there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that was good. All right, did you touch on uh, livable neighborhoods? Well, not yet, going to? but before I move off of um, project updates, mm -hmm. I okay. also wanted to mention in Tracy's absence that we have our next oh, home buyer education class. is uh, Saturday, May 20th. We're taking application registrations for that. It's $10. Um, just contact our office. We also have three residential rehab applications in process that she's working on. And we are assisting, coordinating the demolition of the Salvation Army. Some of you may know that building oh, yeah, on Belfort Road right is coming down. And so mm -hmm. um, originally planned to use it for a live fire training exercise, but the day they were scheduled to burn, it was just too hot. So um, <laughs> our streets department is going to get that down within the next week. So if you see that, that's that will be Demolition 101, <laughs> which time. we're still counting. Um, so that's those are the updates that I want to give you. Okay. On those projects. Can I uh, yes. pose a question? Mm -hmm. With respect to the Summer Youth Employment Program, mm -hmm. uh, do we have a definitive date on when that program is started? No, no, we don't. We don't. we don't. But it will be. It would have to be sometime in June after school is out, and we'll coordinate it to time it around that time of the month when they get out and carry. We, we'll hope to do it for at least eight weeks until they go back to school. Give them some time to have some fun in the summer, but we're still working out the details. We've got the money budgeted, things we have to work with now and finalizes the HR process and some internal things that we have to get, the application process and all of that, and how we're going to screen them and intake them and assign them to different um, positions. We also have it, have it to where, if they're not opportunities in the city, maybe partner with a nonprofit and having them ex have some expanded employment opportunities. So we'll offer that to some of our nonprofit agencies as well. How will it be advertised? Through G10, social media. You probably put an ad in the paper. Um, definitely want get, to get it out there on 
Facebook, that's where everybody is. <laughs> and you all, if you know people, churches, wherever yeah, kids um, in my church. congregate. Okay, you said sometime in June. Mm-hmm. We summit updates. So, just to um, remind you, back in December, we had the advisory committee summit, and we met in January following that meeting, and I included that in your package, the, the items that were shared with the city council during that time. And on page 9, I have your ideas and suggestions that you shared during a previous meeting to go over. Mm -hmm. And also in line with that um, follow-up, that's where the summer youth employment opportunity came. So that was one mm -hmm. bullet that we can um, successfully say we are addressing. Another idea that came up, and you've mentioned this before, was the fact that we needed some type of community gardens or um, some way to address the food desert. Mm -hmm. And in a meeting this morning with uh, Civic Affairs, the same ideas came up. And so we have talked and knowing that they're, they've been expressing an interest in it, and of course you all have expressed an interest in it, if there would be agreement to have a joint meeting and sit down with the Civic Affairs Committee and some other stakeholders that work to distribute, distribute food to see how we could come up with a strategy for bringing our resources together and maybe expanding upon some of the things that are already doing. Because I know different churches are distributing food certain days a week. We've got the food bank out there. We've got the Salvation Army. I think, and Dan is here. Um, for the, I'm sorry, I didn't even introduce Dan Whitney. He's sitting back there. He is our guest for the sorry. night. I'm sorry, I'm so Dan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Mr. Whitney is here with us. Um, you know, different ideas like... Um, how do we bring food to the desert if we can't get the people to the food? And so want to sit down and strategize on some ideas. And if you are open to that, just let me know, show of hands, vote, however you would like to do it. And then I can work with the Civic Affairs Committee on scheduling a date. Um, we, we are asking preferably, if you can, meet during the day. Because that committee is mostly a day committee. And, um, and then bringing in some of the groups that we need to bring in our day type um, employees from other agencies would best work for a day meeting if possible. Mm -hmm. We'd ask you to consider that. Do you want to offer anything, Mr. Dan? That's, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. Okay. Um, there's some good ideas already. Mm -hmm. I think the best way to approach, we have some serious food deserts. We have two areas in this county. Um, and they do include, most of that area is Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. uh, it has gotten bigger over the past several, five, six years. Mm -hmm. um, and as you guys might or might not know, uh, that directly affects mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, what you eat affects you know, how you feel and vice versa. How you feel is, uh, you know, how you eat sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, we've got some serious issues. And the best way to find those the solutions is to come together as whoever we need to be as a team and find those root causes and make some solutions. Thank you. Thank you. And I would say if you have any outside groups, I've been working with the Old North State Medical Society, created a foundation and working on the nonprofit status, but uh, the whole focus of that is to empower youth to be involved in just, just <coughs> Whatever we're, we're doing mm -hmm. needs a, a youth-based focus mm -hmm. because, you know, time right. was for no one. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already have a um, community garden project uh, at 11 acres in Jones County. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, our church, you know, has yeah, property have behind it. It's, it's, it's been worked on for a while. So uh, when you get ready to start, I would certainly bring it up to them to okay. see if, uh, how they got the the parcel they already have mm -hmm. and um, you know it's again another way mm -hmm. of engaging uh, young people mm -hmm. yes ma'am mm -hmm. okay. is, is you talking about uh food that you grow are you talking about food mm -hmm. like because you said something about yes. the churches now i know the churches bring mm -hmm. food from like different yes people that, that donates it but that, are you talking about growing this food mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. all options any idea what we discussed this morning what you mentioned was the the gleaning program where a lot of if you have a truck you can go to a farm and get the food 
and bring it back and just give it away. And we do that at our church. But I, what I have to figure out is how we make that connection. I got to go back up the chain. I know I may get a text and say we have sweet potatoes at the church. Right. Come get them. And there right. are. And, the, you know, and that's, what, that's what happens. You know, it could be exactly. sweet potatoes, Let's corn, stop. greens, whatever that, is, that crop is for whatever season. Mm -hmm. And a, and a message goes out, share this information with people that have a need. What we don't know, and I don't know personally, I'm sure somebody in the church knows, is how we make that connection and how can we build upon that so that it's not just necessarily individual churches but a community-wide effort, if we can make it. <coughs> the uh, potato deal, mm -hmm. when you're, they got with this farmer. Mm -hmm. And the farmer them, you know, they can't care it so much. Right. On their, whatever they have, how they do that thing, but they, whoever they sell it to. Mm -hmm. And uh, where the problem came in with that was the people was going get the potatoes, mm -hmm. go out of town and sell them. Oh, no. That's when the, the farmer found out about it, mm -hmm. and he just cut the cut it thing off. Yeah. He mm -hmm. was donating this stuff, and they was taking food mm -hmm. and selling it, which that was wrong. Yeah, yeah. and I will. But uh, you don't want to go nothing like that, but if you could get in with some of the farmers and mm -hmm. that, I'm talking about the big-time farmers, right. they probably would give you... They give it away. The challenge it was was how to get it because <laughs> you got to go get it. So yeah, how, you, how, you, how do you transport it? So there's some That's logistics. They don't yeah. mind you giving it to mm -hmm. you, but you got to go yeah, get it. Cause we go to Wallace like that. Yeah, we, you can pick all you mm -hmm. want. I loaded my car and bought a whole truck back, mm -hmm. but you got to go get it. Mm -hmm. Cause once they take what they want out of the field, mm -hmm. they just open the field up. They don't care. It's peppers. Mm -hmm. It's tomatoes. Oh, it's, I, I mean, know. Wallace is awesome. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a truck driver, and I go to a whole lot of different places. Mm -hmm. I seen this watermelon field. These watermelon was good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they cut and plowed them in. Mm. I'm like, dang, somebody can use that. Yeah. I mean, it was oh, like, man. oh yeah, it was acres, acres of them. And so he done picked out what he did, mm -hmm. and then they. We just put the rest back in the, in the field. Well, those are the kind of discussions we need to have to figure out if there's a solution to the problem we know we face here. So we'll be, but if, if you all are, the, are in agreement, we'll just coordinate a date and time, mm -hmm. give you some options, and see who can attend. Mm -hmm. Does that work? So will we like, uh, in like in get with the person that delivers them to mm -hmm. us and bring it back to you so you can meet the farmer and find out how he would? Yeah, we'll do. Whitney had get something several he farmers was say. or something. Mm -hmm. The best solution will probably just maybe whenever you guys approve that partnership, mm -hmm. Ms. Lily can reach out to the uh, the uh, NC Co-op Extension. Right, they've already right. been at the USD office, and yes. they have they that can be the central source right. of that farming okay. network. Yes, mm -hmm. um, they have their own stuff, their own programs. Bring, bring them in, mm -hmm. see yes. what they have as far as resources available. Yes. And then we can kind of move forward from there. Yes. Okay. And some of that initial contact has been made because I've talked with, um, I still can't think, I think her name is Lisa, who works at with the community gardening program. And, of course, you got the other side that works with the farmer's market. So there's people out there, people okay. that know that we just need to have a strategic planning meeting and discussion mm -hmm. about what can be done, what maybe has worked in other communities that we can we can um, identify best practices, things of that nature, and be as creative as you like to be. But it gives us something to, to work on, and I think it's a great conversation to, to start, to actually implement something, so we talked about it. Just the synergy is there now to get something done. So. I think the, the, the issue is that you have to have all the people at the table mm -hmm. to be able to put mm -hmm. all the plans mm -hmm. in place, mm -hmm. or to right. at least have discussion or dialogue with right. respect to what the plan will be. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably initially the most challenging part. Just getting the right the people. And identifying who needs to be at the table, so we need your help with right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. All righty. So, that so was we decide to find out when they have their meeting. Yeah, Civic Affairs meets. The you same said during day. the day. They meet during the day at twelve o'clock. There's a lunch meeting, okay. so for those who can get here for a lunch meeting, that works. Okay. Um, because they have a great um, mixed group of people. Marsha's on Civic Affairs, of course. Dan is on Civic Affairs. Mm -hmm. And bringing in a particular day. Oh, and Dr. Artis is on Civic Affairs. They meet on Thursdays. Oh, it's it's a, the first it's Thursday. Third, first Thursday following the first following Monday. The first Monday. Oh, is that how it works? Oh, good. So it's not an crazy. easy date. Well, I will That's, let you know when. The, and it doesn't necessarily have to be following the first Monday. Well, on um, back the same date, if there's another unique date that works best, we can also ha have some other options. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think the issue now is just trying to get the Civic Affairs Committee to meet because mm -hmm. we're going into our break season mm -hmm. and we don't meet until August. August. So it'll be a special uh, meeting. We don't meet during the summer, 
So it'll probably have to be a special meeting. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we probably need to get something together and back to them so we can collaborate a date. And I guess to be thinking about who to invite, who to invite. Mm -hmm. because you have to really think out, out of the box if you want to uh, right. really do something that would be lasting, mm -hmm. some kind of infrastructure you could build that would really make a difference, you know, because uh, right. over time that would outlast uh, those who came up with the idea, you know. And because I'm thinking about people who, you know, elderly people, you know, who maybe can't drive, mm -hmm. you know, and... That's true. Living, you know what I'm saying? You know, and need mm -hmm. that really you know, needs young it's families, families who need, mm -hmm. need food. Well, away. that was that was also suggested today. You've got um, Onslow Community Outreach, who has the Meals on Wheels program. They're already out delivering um, meals. Is there a way to piggyback on that? Uh, somebody literally said, "Have a truck follow the Meals on Wheels truck." you know, and get to the same folks that have a need. But, you know, I think the best thing to do, is, as Dr. Artis said, was to get, I think, get the, the core group together. Mm -hmm. And then as we talk, it, it never fails to say somebody else should be here that we hadn't thought about, and you bring them in. So. Well, my concern was this is some already, and if you're going to get the kids involved, mm -hmm. they'll be out of school soon, mm -hmm. and well, they need to have, do we something. We have a connection you know? to the kids through youth council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about other kids too, like oh, well, my grandson, yeah. you know, he's oh, not in the youth council. Oh, he's not in the youth council, okay. okay. But they help us get the word out, I put it oh, like okay. that. Oh, <laughs> okay. As long as they get the word yeah, out we'll get the, the word kids, out. you know. Yeah, if you have youth ministries in your church, but you know. Okay. Well, <clears throat> okay. well I was just thinking, and I know we have to go on, but I'm just thinking about um, kids who, because uh, there are kids who depend upon the meals they get at school, mm -hmm. I know a lot or they don't them. eat. I mean, right. we just might as well be real about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some groups that are trying to work on that issue. Mm -hmm. I know there's a group that works on the backpack, and they send backpacks mm -hmm. home on Friday. That's weekend, United Way. Food. That's the CHEW program. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. And it makes me wonder, mm -hmm. are we reaching all the kids who need it? Are there some kids who have been left out for whatever reason? Pride? Mm -hmm. Parents who don't follow up with things, whatever it might be, you know. And... Um, and because we're really talking about right now, we're having a conversation about farm produce, which are raw foods, mm -hmm. as opposed to something that a child who's home during the day, because somebody's at work or whatever it is, and needs to be able to eat and can't touch the stove, can't deal with any of that, but needs to have some food of some kind. You know, so it, it's a big discussion. It's a big issue, yeah. 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 So just thinking about, you know, when, when we talk about this, who we really need to be bringing in and including right. in this conversation too. Maybe somebody from the school system mm -hmm. who deals with this and knows maybe who some and of these And we have those are. connections. Dr. Um, Beth Folgers on Civic Affairs. She's with the Board of Education. Of course, Craig Wagner's on Civic Affairs, and he operates the um, CHU program through the United Way. So we know we, we know some high-level people that are already doing something. It's a matter of bringing it all together and seeing where we missing <coughs> the gap. Because mm -hmm. one of the things we know, we just talked about all this stuff is being done. But we still know that there's some gaps. So where can we, you know, try to close it? You, I don't know that we ever 100% eliminate it, but can we do a better job working together? Okay, what do you mean by backpack who on Friday? Mm -hmm. yeah. There are programs that some uh, programs That's the name like of a program. The, yeah, it's oh, a, it's a two program. The like, well, they do. They do. That, they that do. Is, I don't know the name of it, is, but it's the kids who on food. Friday evening yeah. when they leave school. They take a backpack take a home with them that has food in it mm -hmm. because they know these kids won't eat at home during Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so then they bring the backpack back with them to school. And we know that food and, and teachers work on that helps them with their education and their learning. So yeah. you want to make sure. Well, but I mean, this is this is actually going on here as we it's speak. Going on a lot. Where there are kids that yeah, absolutely. It's a wonderful program. It's, it's designed to to reach a population of kids who have limited means at home, families have limited means, or who are the underprivileged, disenfranchised children, and they send them home with food for the weekend so that they can eat. Mm -hmm. And it's called a backpack program. And there's some other stuff in that backpack as well that helps yeah. them along the way. Because like I said, there are kids who, when they cook. leave on Friday, the last meal themselves. they're going to have if it's something doesn't lunch happen lunch on was lunch on Friday. They won't eat again until they get to school and have breakfast on Monday. On Monday. And it's just basically a fact. So uh, it's... Uh, and, the, and the systems that we used to have informally in place mm -hmm. where... Your neighbor down the street would just make spaghetti and she'd make it for 25 people. She'd have the two people in the house mm -hmm. and so the other kids in the neighborhood would just come mm -hmm. over and eat. Mm -hmm. Those programs, those, not programs, those relationships to a great extent don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And so, you know, because uh, you always had somebody in the neighborhood who fed every child around. Now all you had to do was show up and eat. <laughs> and um, so when we talk about who needs to be at this table, right. there may be grandmothers around who mm -hmm. are wishing they had some grandchildren to cook for and don't have them because grandchildren live in California. Mm -hmm. And they would be more than willing, given the resources. access to the resources, mm -hmm. to pick that back up. Right. And so uh, that's why I'm thinking, saying that we really need to think very much outside the, the box, box to get this done because mm -hmm. it is not going to be solved mm -hmm. given the operational systems we currently have mm -hmm. because if, we, if they were, we wouldn't have had a problem. Right. And Gordon, to answer your question, I just did backpack for kids over at my grandson's school, Jacksonville Commons Middle. We did it um, Thursday, Wednesday, and then yesterday we did uh, food for the homeless. We took the canned goods, but the snacks for the backpacks were like nabs and oranges and apples. I spent maybe maybe fifty dollars worth of just junk, so I could take it all over in a bag, and then they distribute it. But the Honor Society from Jacksonville Commons Middle was the one that held the program to raise the money, I mean, raise the food for backpack. So where, so how do you get involved with this backpack? Just, just contact uh, just Craig. Contact, Craig, uh, Craig Wagner, Wagner, United, United Way. Way. And I'll give you the number. Yeah. Right. To you. For those who want to know. All Craig the schools do, uh, yeah. does it. But that's the first time I heard it. When she mm -hmm. said it, I said, All that, the I schools do it. Because yeah, a you, lot you, of don't have, you don't have kids in school. But That's what they're why. trying to do also is get um, connected with community groups, um, churches that can help mm -hmm. sponsors, you know, these schools. You could adopt a school, you know, mm -hmm. and say this And it's not every student school. in the school. Right. No. It's not, not every student. Every student. Yeah. <laughs> and I think right now, I think the last count I heard, they're feeding about 300 kids every weekend. Because the reason I say that, because I remember the last time we was talking, it was before they built the bypass, and y'all was talking about, Homeless people in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. I said, you're right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then y'all saying they were sleeping on the school buses. Mm -hmm. I said, sheds. I don't believe this. Mm -hmm. And then when they started to build the bypass and they talking about they had a community in the woods, I said, now this I got to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went, I went down on that end. And I was hauling concrete. And I went, I went up on the bypass. <coughs> it was kind of high. I looked down. Look down. Look look down. down. I said, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, people. You wouldn't believe He's the people that was in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tent mm -hmm. city. It's a tent city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like amazing. It's a surprise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to add some perspective. There's 193 homeless students right now <coughs> in the school system. That's only for those reported. Mm -hmm. Those are just the ones that are know. reported mm -hmm. because yeah. Yeah. at Northwood Park Elementary, the principal told me, she said, she didn't even realize a lot of them, the kids and the mom were sleeping in their cars mm -hmm. and the kids, you know, refused to say anything until they find out the little girl was so sleepy. When she said, why are you so sleepy? And she said, because. And then she finally said, we sleep in the car. And the principal said, well, I never knew this. And the little girl been sleeping in the car for almost three months. Mm -hmm. Her and her mother and a six-month-old baby. Mm -hmm. Homeless right outside. All they had was a car. And so there's a lot of them that don't admit it, you know. They don't want nobody to know. proud and, yeah, and it's not proud. wanting or the to, mother tell them not to put tell all anyone. their business in this out there. Well, there's a reason, because they don't want to have the kids taken away. That's, right. That's you true. Know, they, right. They you know, social services. Because if you tell them, if you the, tell them that that's where they're living. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, people who are in that and need then, to report then, category, they have to say something. Not going to if you say something about it, too, in the schools, in the school, the kids in the school find out about it. Oh, you good at Picked out. Oh, yeah. Picked yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Lots yeah. of bullying. That's another, that's another factor. Too. All right. Well, we'll keep you posted on, on that. Oh, one more question about that. <laughs> I underlined it. Um, when we say community gardens, and you might be able to answer this a little better, um, are you meaning, are you just meaning going and picking up this food that has already been distributed or actually building, building these community. gardens from the ground up? They that's an be, option. It could be, be anything. <coughs> Right now, the farmers market does. They just built some garden area in that side. So I'll, on the other side of the, the center, farmers market and kind of mm -hmm. look that way. There's some garden, you know, right? Lot, so right. I'm doing classes now, teaching people how to do their own gardens, how to test the soil, mm -hmm. and things that will help empower the families to do their own. Okay. You have the urban garden projects. Uh, you know, idea model. Um, it it could be a I mean, I think it'd be kind of cool to have our own huge Conzo County greenhouse. Okay, so would I. Trees <laughs> and stuff like that. Just as, we but, do. 
I digress. It could be just a combination of all those okay. um, kinds of solutions. Well, there's, okay. there's something similar to First Baptist. Mm -hmm. First Baptist, mm -hmm. they got it going on there. They, they had carts anybody could get last year. Mm -hmm. and everything out in the Grape Harbor, the blueberry fields, the honey. You got, you're talking about <laughs> the church I go to? Mm -hmm. Georgetown. Right in Georgetown. Broadhurst? Broad yeah, Broadhurst. Mm -hmm. We got 26 types of grapes. Right. <laughs> and you should see, they, most a lot of them, that's what I was wondering. I was going to bring that up one time before. Why can't we get the kids to come out and help pick these grapes and the pears and the apples and the plums and the figs? Because really, all the people in our church, just about marching, there's a lot of old people. Yeah. I'd go out and pick. But let me tell you, I can only pick some. You can go stand right in one area and pick a whole 10-pound bucket of grapes we got. Well, when we started out, UNC was at A&T. They mixed them and split them and made different kinds. We got, um, what do you call it, um, Strawberries that don't have the little stickers on them. Mm -hmm. Then you got four kind of grapes, uh, the ones that they make the wine out of that don't have seeds in them. Mm -hmm. But we all know the, the muscadine, muscadine have seeds. The but then they've got a muscadine that don't have seeds. Mm -hmm. So we got all those different kind of, and most of the time they just go to waste. Because I can't pick that many. Well, we're going to do really some youth service some youth projects service. for this summer, mm -hmm. so that's one that we can we're ask. We're going to do the boys and girls. If they want to pick it and donate it, I think that would be a great yeah. um, youth service Rumble project. Yeah, Rumble just call him. He'll be more than glad to, okay. you know, have the kids come over. All right. We've talked about that, at doing um, um, some type of community garden at our church mm -hmm. as well. Um, Collard greens, that, tomatoes, yeah. please. Yeah. It gives some kind of connection to mm -hmm. uh, the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you take care of things that you care about. Mm -hmm. you, know, you throw trash on the ground, it. you do whatever, it's because you don't care about it. Well, a lot of that is a disconnect mm -hmm. from where it is we live. I mean, this is this is our home, just like the house you go to. But you're not thinking about it in that sense. True. And uh, kids aren't raised to do that anymore, so I think that... Um, but I can't say they're not interested because you get them involved in it. Then they and they get so excited it. about stuff because it's brand new to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're exactly right. Because I grew a garden in Panta Green. You know my wife? Me and her have been married almost 30, I'm going to say about 30, close to 25, 30 years during that time. And when I planted the garden, I planted the watermelon. You know she never seen a baby watermelon? <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. A sugar said, baby. That's, that's the baby. I said, yeah. She looked at it, she said, so tiny. <laughs> now, I got a kick out of that, though. You look at somebody, I, I had no idea, too. I got grown that a pickle was a cucumber, cucumber that something had been done to. I had no clue. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I walked through the store and saw a cucumber, I had no connection in my head between that and what was in that jar. <laughs> no. You know, when you grow up in the city and it's all concrete oh, oh, and, you, okay. and you're out yeah. mowing a piece of well, dirt about as big as this table, not even this big, <laughs> you don't have the connection. You you truly do not. Well, and now know. that I've lived here, as long as I have, I remember I'd be going to Raleigh to see legislators and we'd be passing out information about one thing or another. And if the issue about farmers came up, oh, I was just pushing like I had grown up on one. And I'm saying, listen, I don't know. I drive by it. I don't know what it is. All I know is that somebody's making a living. It's important, and you need to support these That's people true. who are out, you know, doing this. So, kids will get involved when you when you introduce them to uh, an issue. They really do. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, Ms. Office of Livable Neighborhoods is continuing. We are still working to um, identify the new neighborhoods. We've got to really finalize that. We've had some some transition in the um, in this office. I don't. I just will announce that Carmela George has resigned. It's no longer with us. So that initiative right now is a little bit slower until we um, get everything up and running through the transition and we'll be able to really finalize the new neighborhoods and bring new new um, neighborhoods on as that position is filled. So we'll keep you posted, but we're still working on it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have it with me, but I'll be glad to at our next meeting bring a copy of our newsletter. Mm -hmm. We have a newsletter, a very nice newsletter that goes out. So it's yeah, a matter of items for our new con uh, consideration for the next uh, meeting for City Council. Mm -hmm. Anything you want taken back, discuss? Or we just going to wait on uh, the letter that. The it may be that we wait till we meet mm -hmm. on this Civic Affairs Joint Initiative, and if there's okay. something that rises up mm -hmm. that we may need their Civic support affairs. on. Mm -hmm. so we'll just. 
Okay, then you bring back information mm -hmm. to us. Have you seen the newsletter? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have. Mm -hmm. Well, can you bring it for the next meeting oh, sure. so we mm -hmm. can yeah. look at it? Mm -hmm. I'll make it up to myself because I've got to lay in the kitchen right now. Yeah. We're going to have to have a special meeting, though, to bring it back to <laughs> us, just, right? No, I just, I'm just assuming I can that Cossack City still knows it. You know, the city council. It and, um, Email it and to you email it to us. Because well, yeah. it'll be two months before oh. we have another meeting. No, that's true. Um, mm -hmm. Another month and a half. But I can scan it. Um, Bayshore newsletter. And they're doing really good. At their last meeting, they gave out a, um, they do a neighborhood, um, what do you want to call it, like a yard of the month for just their neighborhood to recognize their neighbors that are taking care of their yard. So it's really nice to get a nice little plaque with their name on it and mm -hmm. sign in the yard. And of course, they're included in the news, newsletter. So it's really helping to encourage the neighbors to, mm -hmm. to do things if, and it, they're acknowledging it. So that's working. It was a um, neighborhood yard sale, too. And they had, yes, two weeks last ago. Last Saturday, two yeah. weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, April 29th. It was a Saturday, last 29th. Saturday last Saturday, Saturday in April. April. Yes. Mm -hmm. Items for the next agenda? If I may, um, oh, one, one of the issues that I would like to have some information on for the board is where we stand with our current recreation. I know we talked about that at our meeting. Mm -hmm. In terms of recreation plans, I understand that the splash pad is doing well and some of the, the rec centers have been an issue or the recreation environments, gyms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe if we can have a director come and give us a brief yes, sir. Uh, so the community can be informed of where we stand in terms of recreation. On some of the recreation. Mm -hmm. Susan, okay. Susan Baptist, yes, yeah, she can come and update you and do a presentation. Who did? Susan Baptist. Yes, yeah, she did. It kind of at the, the at dinner the, at of the, the night, but mm -hmm. we need to have a copy mm -hmm. of something. That, did she send it over to our meeting or something like that? Some of the things that she said about the splash pad that's going to be in. Um, yeah, well, I have some okay, information from, on that. I was going to give you the date that it's going to open. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but if you want a presentation on all the activities, I think it's mm -hmm. best for her to come and present to you. Yeah, I don't know if she has. She may have something she can hand she out. Can't I think, give us a handout. She don't have to do. Do you want a handout or a personal visit? Because we can do both. I, for me, purpose, per personally, I, I think. Since this is broadcasting, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it helps she other did people other to see night, it. Yeah. Her being here would be very nice to see tell that. us what she's yeah. doing. You know, City Recreation is doing uh, mm -hmm. swimming mm -hmm. yes. lessons. Yes, yes. She's she been doing you know. that for years, but people don't know. And that, so, country club. This is a way to get her to get the word out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, even the issue of that, we're talking about partnering with a couple of the hotels to use their pools at certain times. I mean, that was enlightening. Yeah, I don't think she would mind coming. Okay. I'll invite her. We'll see if she'll come. Mm -hmm. Give us a little insight on that. All right. Okay. Any questions or comments? Okay. We have some key dates here. I'll see you. We have the Jacksonville Jamboree on May the 6th. The planning board meets on May the 8th. Home buyers education class May the 20th. Jack Amiette Splash Pad opens May the 27th. And the next meeting is Thursday, July the 6th, 2017, at 6 p.m. May I have a motion to close the meeting? So moved. Second. And by that, we are adjourned.